So today's intro was gonna involve a whole intricate Rube Goldberg machine, but unfortunately it didn't work. So I threw a bit of a tantrum and then I tripped and fell on it and smashed it. Anyway, here's the tech news, I guess. Samsung officially launched the Galaxy XR, its much anticipated mixed reality headset at an event yesterday. It's the first headset powered by Android XR, the OS for headsets announced by Google last December, and Samsung says it's designed as the first step in their vision of an open, scalable XR ecosystem. The price for entry? a nice cool 1800 US dollars, which is worth approximately half an Apple Vision Pro, unless you're on eBay, where the corpses of a dead dream litter the landscape. Under the hood, it packs the new Snapdragon XR2 Plus Gen 2 chip, a stunning micro OLED display, full hand and eye tracking, and a UI that looks hauntingly similar to the Vision Pro. <laughs> And of course, Google's Gemini will let you do amazing things you couldn't do before, like organize your windows. Do people still want an AR headset after the Vision Pro bombed? Well, just in case they don't, Samsung confirmed they're also working on smart glasses, which could compete with Meta's Ray-Bans through a partnership with the brands Warby Parker and Gentle Monster. So whether you wanna enter the metaverse or just forget what sunlight looks like, Samsung's got you covered, literally. OpenAI has fulfilled the prophecy and introduced Atlas, a web browser with ChatGPT built in. Atlas is meant to become more helpful over time by using its memory of your chats and searches to better comprehend what you're doing and complete tasks for you. If an AI learning to understand and imitate your browsing behaviors scares you too, don't worry. The feature is completely optional, so you can make it so your browser won't even know that you're gaslighting it. Plus, OpenAI says Atlas will pause to ensure you're watching it when it accesses sensitive sites like your bank or when it just learned how to stand on one leg and just wants you to be proud of it. Look at me, look at me. But what about incognito mode? I hear all the freaks saying. <laughs> hey, you, don't worry, Atlas has that and it will temporarily log you out of ChatGPT so it will remember nothing of your secret tryst. But that also means it won't remember the specific kind of cat photos you like. Moving on, Atlas's announcement video shows it's shopping and filling carts based on simple prompts, which is a worrying level of power, given that security research from Brave Software found that hidden text in an image can manipulate AI browsers like Perplexity's Comet. They showed that this text can trick a browser into, among other things, visiting a hacker-controlled website. Great, we're putting our web browsing in the hands of a hallucinating, gullible Greek titan. Atlas was a titan? The effects of Monday's major Amazon Web Services outage are still being felt, with some Slack users reportedly being completely unable to leave work conference calls which sounds like something out of a late night snack induced stress dream. Speaking of sleeping, during the outage, thousands of eight sleep bed owners found they couldn't adjust the smart bed's position or temperature, resulting in some folks roasting in their blankets like proverbial pigs. I'm not calling these poor people pigs. I'm just being clear about that. Eight Sleep then introduced a new outage mode to control the bed even during an AWS service disruption. Can, can we just ha use that one, use that mode all the time? No? <laughs> all right. Still, the outage might be a good distraction for Amazon because the New York Times is reporting on leaked documents that suggest Amazon plans to replace 600,000 human employees with robots by 2033. The report says Amazon's robotics team aims to automate 75% of the company's operations, and they're expecting to cut around 160,000 US jobs by 2027. However, an Amazon spokesperson attempted to downplay this news, telling The Verge that this holiday season, they're planning on hiring 250,000 humans who may or may not go on permanent holiday shortly afterwards. Seems like Amazon could use some business management help from our sponsor. Odoo, they're in the business of helping businesses do business. And you might think, well, Riley, that's pretty broad, okay? What do they help with specifically? But that's just it. 
They can help with everything. Sales, inventory, accounting, invoicing, human resources, project management, procurement, point of sale. These are all things I'm told that businesses have to worry more about if they don't use Odoo's full suite of integrated user-friendly and customizable apps. They can even help you create your own app with a drag and drop interface and no programming skills required, just vibes. The vibes are impeccable. And you can share those vibes with your customers by using Odoo's forum building and email marketing tools. But hey, if you don't need those ones, that's fine. If you only need to use one Odoo app, it's free. Use our link for a free 15-day trial with no credit card required or book a demo with our expert team to learn how Odoo can help your business. Fun fact, the quick bits enjoy watching those marble races more than Go Rube Goldberg machines. They're faster and it's all about speed with the quick bits. You know that more than anyone. Yeah. TSMC has produced the first NVIDIA Blackwell GPU wafer on American soil, marking a big win for domestic chip making, sort of. Before these wafers actually become usable GPUs, each wafer still has to fly back to Taiwan for packaging. Now that's where TSMC handles their chip on wafer substrate and high bandwidth memory stacking, critical steps that bond multiple chips and stack memory inside the processor. And they have said, we're only doing it there. So until those advanced processes exist in Arizona, these made in America chips will keep earning frequent flyer miles on their way to Taiwan and back. Maybe they'll take a holiday uh, sometime. YouTube is rolling out AI likeness detection, a tool designed to catch deep fakes before they go viral. Because they will go viral. <laughs> <clears throat> You've gotta stop them. Creators can opt in by doing a quick selfie scan, letting Google's AI compare faces and voices in uploads to detect impersonations. It's just occurring to me now that this also gives them more accurate data about what your face looks like specifically and how to reproduce it. Yeah. Which is the same thing you have to do when you log into the Sora app. Okay, if someone tries to use your likeness, YouTube can flag, label, or block the video automatically. Because if Google is serious about one thing, it's about giving creators the tools they need to fight content created with other tools Google created to fight creators in the marketplace of content. Speaking of AI, a new study by the European Broadcasting Union and the BBC found that nearly 45% of AI assistant responses about current major events contained major issues. For example, Google Gemini claimed the NHS in the UK does not recommend vaping to help quit smoking. Well, not only does the NHS actually recommend it, it's objectively the coolest way to quit. With the younger generation increasingly using AI for news, I think everyone can see how that could start getting a bit capital H hairy. I don't know why there was a capital H. A tiny bionic eye implant, first developed by a company called Pixium Vision back in 2022, is finally delivering on its promise, helping blind patients read again. The system, now refined by the aptly named Science Corporation, suddenly more suspicious of this whole thing, uses a rice-sized microchip implanted under the retina and a pair of smart glasses that record the world in front of you. The system uses both of these components to create infrared light signals, something that can be converted to actual visual information by the eye-inserted chip. In recent trials, more than 80% of patients with severe macular degeneration regained enough vision to recognize letters and small words. At this rate, we'll need implants just to unsee half the stuff on the internet. When are those coming? And researchers in Japan have made a breakthrough in the field of enteral ventilation via anus, AKA EVA, AKA butt breathing. Let me explain. In 2024, researchers snagged an Ig Nobel Prize in physiology for showing that mice, rats, and pigs can actually absorb oxygen through their rear ends. If scientists put some oxygenated liquid in there, which is a key, key detail. Now, the same group is studying whether using this method can be used to bypass blocked airways or clogged lungs in humans. And the first step, asking 27 healthy male volunteers to hold some regular non-oxygenated liquid inside of there and clench. And we swear we're not just doing this because we think it's funny. And these guys, they turned out all right, with the only adverse effects so far being some bloating and discomfort, obviously. I feel like they could have gotten the same findings from taking those 27 guys to Taco Bell, but 
I think that study already won an Ig Nobel Prize. I, you know what? I think we should all take a butt breath. We'll be back on Friday with more tech news. I've gotta go pick up the pieces of my Rube Goldberg machine. Maybe I can salvage something. Hey, let me know in the comments what your favorite Rube Goldberg machine is. Do they have names?